Today I just briefly want to talk about something that I'm going... Welcome to Africa. Nepal should have take lights. <laughs> Come on, sugar, sugar. Hey, sugar, sugar. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. My name is Abimala Crank. If it's your first time here, don't be a stranger. Come on, click that subscription button. Do subscribe to my channel. Um, this is a place of love, and I hope you can get comfortable. I do content. I like when I say content with American accent. But I do content, you know, lifestyle content. I sit down, I do chit chat. Guys, y'all please subscribe to my channel. Don't let me talk too much. Um, today I just want to talk about something very short and just very precise and something that I'm going through. And I'm going to title this particular video, <laughs> The Journey to 35. Your girl was born on the 11th of November, 1986. That means this year, November 3rd. Eh? Did I say on the 11th of November? Hey God. Your girl was born on the 3rd of November, 1986. That means that this year, November, I will be turning 35. And so this is the journey to 35. Maybe when I am 35, I will have a different conversation too and a different storyline to give you guys. But till then, I'm just going to keep it short and sweet. Um, few things I never thought would happen to me on this journey to 35. So growing up, even till now, I've never been one of those girls that would sit down and tell you I always knew that I was going to be married by this time. I always knew I was going to be this by this time. I just never set those kind of long-term goals. I've always been a very short-term, but short-term, realistic goal kind of person. I don't know if that makes sense. So I can tell you where I want to be and what I want to achieve in the next two years. Whenever in the next five years, I just don't know. It doesn't mean I don't think about it. I just don't set a heavy goal on it. I don't know if that makes sense or if I'm the only person who is like that. I just rather take it small because then I, I feel like I get very overwhelmed and I don't like to play my hand or over anticipate simply because I know when it boils down to it, right, I have no control over it. So let's start with the obvious first of all. I always thought, like I said, even though I didn't have a plan, I just never thought that by the time I would be 35, I would be single. And it's weird, but it's true. And people like me, <laughs> because I know that, I know you people can identify, we are funny. Because I never actively took time out to date. And I didn't realize that there was something like being inactive when it comes to dating. Until when I spent a lot of time with myself during the pandemic. For the longest time, people would always approach me and always assume, I mean, I'm, I'm in a relationship. And I would tell them I'm not. And they would ask me, well, why are you single? I'll say, ah, me, I don't know. Ah, me, I don't know. Can I date myself? I can't date myself. They stop asking me all kinds of stupid questions. But as I've spent more time with myself, especially in the last one year, I realized that as much as I was intentional with everything else, when it came to dating, I wasn't. And I realized that subconsciously I wasn't because I wasn't ready. And then by the time I got ready and I realized I was ready, I was literally 34. And so I sit down and I'm like, oh my God. Remember, this is why this never happened. Because at the end of the day, as much as I might not necessarily like the concept of you are what you attract, it did work in favor of me. And when I mean you are what, I wasn't looking. So there was no way people were going to come to me. Now, it wasn't that people weren't having conversations with me. People weren't hitting on me. I just would constantly always just cock block myself. And I couldn't understand why. Although in hindsight now, the people that I cock block myself from, I never saw myself dating them. So it kind of even did help. And now realizing that I spent so much time being intentional about a lot of things, but not about my dating life, it's a hard pill to swallow. But it's not a sad pill because I've gotten there. And so now I'm aware. And so now I'm working on being more intentional about dating in terms of Dating apps every once in a while, talking to friends, friends introducing me to people, going on blind dates, which I've only done twice. But the point is I'm now intentional about it because I know I'm ready, because I know I need that balance and I want that balance. It's a different thing if that's not you and you don't want it, but I do. But this journey to 35, I definitely never thought I would be unmarried at 35. 
but that's fine because good things are not rushed, right? Now, another thing on this journey to 35 that has been hard, hard because I also didn't anticipate this was finances. For seven years, I worked in a corporation that was great. I earned salary, for those that didn't know. Um, I was a nine to five earner. But last year changed and pivoted my entire career and the trajectory of my life. I resigned from that job. There was nothing bad that happened. Last year, I spent way too much time with myself. And one of the things I realized was that I wanted more. I wanted more in terms of ownership of my life, in terms of ownership of my craft. I felt like there was so much more that I could do and I could give. And I felt like I just started on this journey, this new career path. And there was so much I could do. And being in that space was kind of limiting me because I wasn't being able to reach my full potential. And so I resigned from that job. Now, with resigning from that job or any job, I don't know about people, you resign and you feel like you have quite an amount of money at least to keep going for the next two years just in case you don't get, you know, another job. And then the pandemic hits. And then Nigeria being Nigeria, if inflation within the past six months has doubled and tripled. And it's like, I just resigned in October. How is it that I've blown through X amount of millions already? But that's life. So there's rent that you're paying. There are bills that you're paying. And so you realize that you now have to start doing your needs and from your wants and opportunity cost. And I never thought on this journey to 35, I'll be there where I'll be saying, listen, if my GSTV plan before was 20,000 naira a month and I was paying it easily because I was flexing, man is like on 10K now, which is that I don't get to see channel 101 anymore. But that's life and that's reality. It's not because I cannot afford it. It's because I choose not to. Because now when there's no constant monthly income, I'm choosing to be very prudent so that I don't ever have to commit anybody to ask anybody for anything. Anybody be my mother, not the world. But on this journey to 35, this was a place where I never anticipated. And I'm here, but I'm okay with it. I'm okay because I think this is God using this entire time as a testing period for me. But did I ever anticipate this? No. So I've given you guys in terms of my single status and my relationship status. I've let you guys know in terms of financial status. And this is me being realistic because within the means of funds that I have, I'm also saving as well. And um, it's not easy, but it's needed in terms of discipline. On this journey to 35, I have learned more about myself and the dynamics of friendships that I have. So I wouldn't say I have lost friends, but I have realized the dynamics of friendships that I have with certain people. And I've also gained new friends. And it's been very insightful. So I tell people when it's a joke, especially when people that I used to be really cool with before, they see me now and they say, ah, but you've changed, though. you're always busy now, you don't have my time. And I'm like, guys, but nothing has changed with me. I'm still the same. And those who know me know, right? I'm still the same person. I still don't like to go out that much. It's just not me. Um, am I way more busy than I was before? Yes, but I still create time for those who create time for me. Um, but I've also realized that a lot of people that I knew didn't know me as much as they thought they did. And it's weird because, you know, people have perceptions of you and for the longest time, you just go ahead with it just simply because nobody ever wants to be an island. But when the world pauses, like what happened in 2020, you are forced to evaluate a lot of things. And one of them for me was friendships. So it's giving me a, a deeper insight, first of all, as to who I am, as to the kind of friend that I am and the kind of friends I want my friends to be and the kind of friend I want my friends to be to me. I don't know if that makes sense. So I'm being way more intentional in how I'm choosing to spend time or lack thereof with my friends or with people that I know. I've also been very intentional in terms of boxes of people. I keep telling people that I think it's very, very important and healthy that you create boundaries with the people that you know. You decide who's a friend, you decide who's an acquaintance. You also understand that even with friendships, there are seasons. And when those seasons come to an end, you own it and you just move on with life. It doesn't mean you don't love them anymore. It doesn't mean they love you less. It's just life. But it's very important that you take time out to understand that. On this journey to 35, I've been very grateful for the growth of my emotional intelligence. Now I have, and this is not to brag, and this is me saying this with all level of humility, I've always been a very self-aware person. Um, but I don't think I took enough time to, 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 
to build on personal growth. You know how you know things, but the fact that you know something doesn't mean that those things don't evolve. And so for them to evolve, it means that you also your knowledge of those things needs to evolve as well. And so with 2020 <laughs> and the world pausing, I've had days Nepa again. I've had to take time out to pause and stop and learn, unlearn, and relearn a lot of things about myself, about people, about the environment that I'm in, about the things I choose to feed into my soul, the things I choose to take in, and then most importantly, how I choose to react to things and people. For me, that was always very difficult because I'm a logical thinker. I'm also very practical. I'm a, I'm, I'm a realist, but it's hard as well because I'm also an empath. So it's finding that balance. I'm the kind of person that I'm a sharpshooter. People say you're very direct, you're very blunt, but I'm blunt with tact. I would not just come and meet you and say your hair is ugly. It would never happen. So as much as I might give it to you, I only give it to those that I know, that know that it's coming from love and can handle it, right? And so over time, I've had to learn to extend grace to people. And th that came hard for me as much as I'm an empath, simply because I always, expect, I always expected people to just think the way I think. Can't you see where I'm coming from? Can't you see that there's sense in this? Why, why are you just choosing to be senseless? But over time, I've had to, and that's, that, that's what I'm talking about in terms of being intentional about building this emotional, emotional intelligence as to how to react to people and to things, you know? So now I've had to extend grace. So as opposed to be before where my usual reaction will be to, I will take a pause. I will look at it. Sometimes I keep telling people there is so much growth in silence. So now I just keep quiet. As opposed to before where I will react, I will feel the need to express. I will feel the need to let you understand where I'm coming from. I am that chick that will buttress the buttressing, but now I don't. If I don't feel it's worth it, I just keep quiet. I was telling someone the other day that closure, closure is overrated. It's not every time you need to express yourself. It's not every time you need to tell somebody how you're feeling. Sometimes they're darkened. Just be quiet. Swallow it. There's no need. Partly when you know that you're talking to a, you're in between a rock and a hard place. I.e. the person will never get you. The person will never understand it. There's some people that are just literally break walls. In situations like that, what do you do? You talk, 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 you will tire. So I just let it keep quiet. And then if you're someone that I know gets it. And you're someone that I know that at every point in time in which we've had conflicts. Because that's life. We get to that point where we find a resolve, where we find a resolution. Then I would now buttress to you. And then we agree to disagree and then we move on. So that's that. In this journey to 35, I have learned to embrace family. There's so much of my mother that I see myself. And as a young lady, you know, um, I, I, I always felt like I could pick and choose. I love how my mom loved my dad and how my mom respected my dad. My dad. Um, I love how my mom was a go-getter. I love how my mom did and tackled 50 different jobs. I didn't like the fact that my mom was very soft. My mom looks and comes up as a very hardened person. But at the core, at the center of my mother, my mother is marshmallow. And I didn't like that. And every time she would be so kind and so soft and so to people, I'm like, ah. That can never be me. Every time I see people take advantage of her, I'm like, oh, that can never be me. But over the years, especially in this last one year, sitting down and looking at the kind of beautiful person that she is and the blessings that God has given her, I know it's not because of everything else. It's because of who she is at that core. And so I've spent a lot of time understanding her, not judging her, but looking at her and seeing where she's coming from and giving grace to her and learning that sometimes there's nothing wrong with wearing your heart on your sleeves. There's nothing wrong with giving. Especially giving to someone that you know has hurt you, will hurt you and will keep hurting you. But you give regardless. Do you know what it takes? And so I've learned to do that. And for that alone, I appreciate my mom so much. I was having a conversation with my friend Bumi today and she was like, but that's the difference with me and you. You see, as much as people would think I'm just a very uh, cold person, I'm very... I'm, I am that person that would always still take a chance on people. Especially even if you bought me twice. No matter how much. Because I never take things personal. I never. Once I'm able to logically deduce why this happened, tell you how I feel if I feel the need to or not. 
it means that if another opportunity comes and I need to work with you, I need to be in the same environment with you, I'll reach out to you again. I'll move on from it. I don't hold grudges. I don't hold things on. And I learned that from my mom. And that's over time on this journey to 35, how much time I've spent just watching her. Watching my siblings and my brother and my sister and how smart they are and how, 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 how intentional they are when it comes to financial growth and just spending and living life intentionally. My sister is one of those people that Titi buys back today, she's carrying it, she don't care. She's telling me, but life is too short. You work hard, you need to learn to give yourself something back. And I didn't used to do that. And they will tell you now. Me, I feel buy cloth today. I don't go wear until next year. Hey, me, for what? My bottom box. I go rock calm. I go put on for inside my suitcase. Go dead there. Mold go before I wear it. And so it's, it's all like it's the small things, but you don't realize how much habits that you just picked up over the years that are so imbibed in you. And that's why I said this journey of relearning and unlearning has been crazy, but I've learned to appreciate my family way, way more. And finally, on this journey to 35, I've just learned to live and let live, you know. Live and let live. Um, I'm learning to be more intentional with the things that I do and the choices that I make and to be okay with it. Um, I'm learning that as much as I think I can do it all, I really can't and that I'm nothing without Christ. I, 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 I tweeted today and I think I'll put up a tweet where I was telling people that, have you ever experienced or had one of those good prayer cries? <laughs> you know when you sit down and when you're just in communion with Christ, you read your Bible, you read your daily, your 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 daily readings, and then you get to that point where it's time to pray, and you just think it's going to be one of those short ones. And by the time you open your mouth, your gut literally hurts, and you just start to express things you didn't even know you needed to let out. You start to let it out, and from letting it out, you're so vulnerable, you break yourself down before your Creator. That's me, and every time I do that, I feel so unburdened. And I feel so light and then I feel like I'm able to refocus again and so on, to, on this journey to 35 I've learned to not tighten the world to my chest to realize that God literally has me and that I am nothing without him all the times when I try to fix things I'm trying to make spaces for things and I try to bend things you know and it never goes according to plan it's because God doesn't want it for me I'm that person that I will come to Christ and I'll be very specific but yet more specific. I don't know if that makes sense. I will sit down and I will pray about work and I will pray about my... I pray a lot for people more than I pray for myself. And I will pray for my siblings, for my mom, for my family, for my friends, for my enemies. And I'm never specific with all the things that I need, you know. Especially when it comes to major things. So I can pray about God, please help me out. God, please make me financially. But then the little things I think I have control over, which is my weight. Until I have to stop and realize that people, if you ever want to just do better... Be more consistent, be more disciplined, get healthier. You need to tell God to help you because you can't do it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4 13. Mate, I started to realize now there's nothing I don't pray to God about. Too. Father, as I eat this food, please let it nourish my body. God, if it's this person that's talking to me, if it's not this person, take it far away from me. The littlest thing that I thought I had control over before, that I didn't used to bring to his feet because I thought I had control over, I realized now that. Nothing, nothing. Whether it's small, whether it's big, lay it at his feet. Unburden yourself. And he got you. So in this journey to 35, I'm excited to see what's going to happen in November. I have no plans. I have no clue. I am still jobless, aka freelancing right now. But I'm thankful to God for the opportunities that have come and have been able to help me feed and take care of myself and take care of my needs. I lack for nothing and I want for nothing. And for that, I'm thankful. I don't know what the next... Hold on. We may. June, July, August, September, October, November. I don't know what the next six months hold, but I'm super excited. I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not one to speak a lot of things, you know, just say, oh my God, this was, this, 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 this. I don't know what the next six months hold, but I'm excited. For you know, next time, by the time I turn 35, the conversation will be totally different. I'm going to be telling you, I probably don't see you like, or you know, I'm now the new director of something, 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 something. I got AKA amount of money in my account. My mama blessed, my brother blessed, my sister blessed, my niece and nephew blessed, my sister-in-law blessed, my sister getting married, we getting paper, y'all getting paper, you get a car, I get a car, we all get a car, I don't know, <laughs> but what I'm trying to say, <laughs> what am I shouting, <laughs> what I'm trying to say, <laughs> These people are messing up my vibe, what I'm trying to say is that on this journey to 35, 
I'm letting go and letting God. That's on period. On this journey to 35, I'm choosing not to hold anything down. I'm trying to get my body right so I can do that photo shoot and look tight. Do you guys see my rise? But on this journey to 35, I'm just living. I'm living, man, you guys. So I'm going to tell you right now that if you're on this journey to 35 and you surpass 35 and the same things that you anticipated in your life and, then you're, and they haven't happened yet and you're not there yet, don't worry about it. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Why? Because he knew his plans he had for you before he brought you on this earth. So why are you to question? Who are you? Stop it. You better smile, Jerry. Anyway, guys, that's what I want to tell you guys. Hope you guys are okay. Do take care. If you thought this video was impactful or it made sense, please like, please share, please subscribe, please comment. I'm trying to be better on YouTube. I'm start, I've started replying people now. My life is busy, but I'm making intentional choices to make time available for you lots because I care about you guys. So please, guys, um, let me know what your thoughts are about this. I feel like I kind of mumbled around, but I know you guys get the gist. Because with these things, I try to be organic. I don't always want to sit down and hold book and give it step by step. As the Spirit is leading me, I'm leading it back to you. So yeah, man, thank you guys so much. I truly appreciate it. Take care, be safe, and I will see you guys on the next unpopular opinion that nobody asks more. Ah, mm. Anyways, I'll see you guys. Yeah. So yeah, take it. Peace out. Kisses. Hugs. Bye.